Grandfather Hoods. How we doing? Hey, what's up, man? We're doing great. Yeah. I like your glasses, bro. Man, your glasses are cool, too. It's very uh, provocative. Uh, I, I'll have mine next time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually, so I usually don't wear mine, but I'm having like headaches today. So I have to mm-hmm. wear the, the blockers. Yeah, uh, just, mine like like yours where I can see us in your glasses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yours are bouncing off the screen. My, you can't see my eyes, right? My shits are. No, we see your fucking eyes. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I feel like mine got mad glare. Do you have the blue light on on your uh, in your prescription? I, I have no prescription. This is strictly just for blue light. Oh, okay, okay, um, got it. I have the the blue light. Thing you do, and I have the tent. The tent, oh, like okay. if it goes into the sun, which my girl oh. clowned me. Oh, so That's you got whack. The, uh... That's corny. The transition lenses is that? Yeah, she's like, if it doesn't go all the way dark, it's stupid. Oh, hmm. I gotta go pick my. I gotta go pick mine up. But this will be my first time having glasses. Oh, so wait, how yeah. bad is your si- as your eyesight? Uh, it's okay. I mean, reading is fundamental. Is, is fucked up now. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Yeah, I put it off for the longest, but then shit is just getting blurry, and I can't like read close up, small print, and all that stuff. So, can we talk about that a little bit? Because I'm. I put off like injuries that I've gotten, right? Not necessarily visual shit, but like I, I, I think I think I told you guys already. Like I have a boot now. Like I've been wearing a boot for the last like week, except for our trip to to Colorado. Bootsy Collins. Bootsy Collins. Yeah, I got the Bootsy Collins, and and that all stems from me having flat feet, not getting that figured out, then getting plantar fasciitis, not really treating that, and then systematically like it kind of travels up the leg. So the complications just get worse and worse and worse. And then fi- <laughs> finally, I'm like, damn, I really want to go back to playing basketball. And that's what prompted me to go figure out what's going on. Sounds like I'll be okay. But like my daughter now has issues with flat feet that we didn't even pay attention to. And, but she's lucky enough that me having gone through some of this stuff, I can be like, yo, we should go to the doctor and check this out versus uh, because it starts off light, so you think you could just get through it, all right? But Look now we can treat her as a consequence of my, you know, ignoring my own issues. So for your kids, you would want to just as soon as something pops up, probably tackle it right away. Whereas for yourself, ride it out until till forever. Yeah, and then you adapt to the pain, which is the craziest part of it all. It's like insanity. Yeah. Think about it. So that's the, that's the, uh, yeah. I mean, does your, do your kids even know that you're nice plug? (laughs) Do your kids even know that? Cause it's like a contradiction, right? It's like, we tell them to, all right, we're going to get all this stuff checked out, but then we don't do it ourselves. Yeah. I mean, with my daughter, I'm I'm guilty of it too. I think we all are, but, but it's, and, and then we use the excuse of like, oh, either we don't have time or we, put the front up like we don't have time but we're just afraid of having to go through the process of whatever it might be not having time is the convenience of, or like it makes helps the excuse right to not do it for sure but it's but it is an interesting point though like saying one thing and doing another and then that example for your kids because now that my daughter has a similar issue i'm 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 the cautionary tale and that's how i'm positioning it to her but right. She could easily have come back and be like, yo, but why didn't you why didn't you treat this? And I'm like, well, you know, technology wasn't all that popping back then to know, right. you know, all that kind of which is partly true. But really, I could have solved this thing a long time ago. I just didn't move fast enough. You know, I think the easiest lesson for that to be learned and to really pass on to your kids is dealing with your with your mouth and your teeth and going to the dentist. That I learned the hard way of having a big gap before, you know, going back to the dentist in my youth. Like, I don't need to go to the dentist. Mm. And if my mom wasn't making me go, then I'm not going. And then when I was an old enough teenager going into young adulthood, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to go. And then my mouth started hurting. Then I go and I had three uh, cavities where they had to do, uh, ¿cómo se llama? Root canal. (laughs) Three root canals. And and I (laughs) I said, never again. And ever since then, I've been a, uh, I have excellent uh, credit score at the dentist. <laughs> <office>. <laughs> so, 
I, it's funny you say that because like I, we've always been I mean even as a little kid and in through adulthood I've always been really on top of physicals and you know dental stuff not because I've had a painful experience just it, it was a habit that was formed by my my mother was actually on my ass regardless of whether or not I lived with her right. so she helped instill that with <laughs> within me but it is an interesting point like when you when you learn to adapt to a behavior based on the pain that it caused not to be doing whatever that habit might have been right that's the I kind of use that in my parenting life as a means to to teach my kids because I come from a place where when I was growing up or being you know nurtured whatever a groomed to be a, an adult it was a lot of screaming at me it was a lot of like threats it was like you know sometimes it would be a spanking or hit you with the belt that kind of stuff in order to fall in line and do whatever it was it was it was more fear based right now, I mean, I still use some of those fear tactics in my parenting, but not physical, but more like painting the picture. It's like, yo, all right, right now you're doing this, that, and the third, and you're not having any consequences, but here's how this can play out for you based on my own personal experience or what I know other people have gone through. Take this into account as you're making decisions that go down this path. And then I'm like, and now you can't come to me 10 years, five, however long it is and tell me you didn't know because this was laid out for you perfectly. Now you get to decide whether or not you want to keep going down that path. So it's worked out pretty well so far. It, obviously, I don't do that with everything. This heart stops with certain things because I could see it getting out of control and really like causing severe pain or some sort of really bad thing. But it, it is interesting because I don't have to scream. I don't got to threaten. I just lay out the way it is. And then you make the decision because you're old enough to be able to do so. My wife just uses me as the, if my son doesn't want to do a good job brushing his teeth. She's like, you want to have dad's teeth? So <laughs> I got the old, I got the, I, I got the old, uh, I had a couple cavities when I was a kid, but you know, back then it's like that, you know, the old school drilling and the old school fillings and so they look like shit now <laughs> you know so she's like dad open up your mouth and you oh, look like, like that. dark fillings <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 it's not it's not that you got like the gang sign teeth it's just inside you look and there's like also, yeah like, yeah yeah mm-hmm. we'll post pictures of it like, yeah. <laughs> hey um i got a couple things Word. if we're off the topic already yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. um thrilling so, topic that was so first first <laughs> First quick topic is uh, I get back, you know, this trip, we just went on a trip. Uh, Manny met us up. We wish you were there, Kay. Uh, we were at uh, Red Rocks for Mayday's Mayday show. And it was it was great. Part of the um, asinine tour for. Oh, my God. Pick nine. Pick nine. Pick nine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, you know, strange. Leave on a Sunday. Come back on a Monday. Music. <laughs> leave in the morning get back at night so that means uh all day sunday my you know my daughter she's off of school so she's not i'm not with her then she goes to school on monday and then at night i get home after the kids go to sleep so the next morning my well no first my girl tells me when i get home that my that sh- my daughter was watching youtube on the on the tv they were streaming it and there was like a cartoon about a family and then like the father in the family and then uh, she looked to, to my daughter and, and her eyes were like watery and she oh. looked sad and then she's like is something wrong and she's like she stayed quiet and then she asked her again and she's like daddy i miss daddy mm. which <laughs> crushed me to hear she told and, you after you got home you said right yeah that the monday okay. night I, mm. my daughter was already asleep and she had told her that maybe i might get home early and might be able to see her in bed oh damn she, terrible that she would have told her that but i mean she she was being hopeful that maybe the flight gets in and you know and all this stuff but that never works out that way right so the next morning um i see so i don't know if i told you guys i do these uh these affirmations with my daughter did i have i told you guys i think you might have mentioned it but we didn't get into it yeah so i do these affirmations with her and and i just you know have her say you know like i hold her hands and i have her look at me in the eyes and i tell her to repeat after me and it's like daddy i'm smart daddy i'm beautiful. oh yeah yeah remember that Wrong, daddy, mm-hmm. I'm this. and she she does it all the time with me you know we've been doing it for months and 
Monday morning, she's getting ready for school. She comes down, you know, I'm thinking she's going to go crazy when she sees me. She's just like regular, pretty regular. Like if I was there and I go to do the affirmation and she doesn't want to do it. And then I notice she's actually, she's upset with me. Mm -hmm. She's like, I don't want to do the affirmation. She refused to do it. And I'm like, please. And she's like, no. And she like went and like went into the corner and like looked down and I'm like, damn, dude, like she, she really let me have it for have it for being gone and that that bothers me because i have several trips coming up and and some of them are over no most of them are over the weekend it's like at least Mm. one of the days which i think is worse because that's when she kind of has the full day with with us so that hurt me pretty bad um and i ask you guys and i know Kay, you're traveling a lot manny you've traveled a lot have you guys dealt with that and how do you deal with that 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 really it hits in the gut yeah um i'm still dealing with that i know that um yeah it doesn't seem to get any easier quite honestly i mean i think when he was younger it was actually easier cuz maybe they just know a little less or they're not really processing it so much but um yeah last couple times even if it's just short trips but just gets really upset and gotta kind of talk them through it it's just it's tough you know it it is tough and then um he doesn't really he's not mad when i get back he's pretty happy when i get back but the other day he got mad which was I don't know if it was all connected. It might've just been connected from the different travel and all this kind of stuff. Um, But like when he got back from school, I guess I wasn't like in the moment I had some stuff going on and it was more of a quick hello, you know, and then back to what I was doing. And I think between that and then just the couple of weeks of in and out travel, um, like he started acting weird that night and kind of got into it and then it and then you know the the anger revealed itself so that was a new one for me too of just like huh so now you're getting mad at me <laughs> for for shit did, did he t- like did you guys have a conversation about it yeah yeah he tried deflecting it onto something else and then uh my wife called him out on it and uh and then then he was able to kind of sit down and say all right well i'm mad at you i'm i'm angry and yeah here's why x y and z <laughs> so I was like, okay damn and you don't want to share that with us so that we can learn something no you want to keep it to yourself no i mean it, it was it was <laughs> he didn't say it's like it was a cliffhanger a, i'm like yo all right and then no no it was it was really it was really it was really about um he didn't bring up the travel stuff, but it was all, but there's been a couple of weeks of it being connected. So I know he's had his ups and downs of that, but then it's like, okay, I'm home. But then when he gets home and I'm not in the moment, like, cause usually when he gets home, it's like, I kind of stop what I'm doing and like, it's our time. And I'm in, you know, it's, it's him. Right. And, and this, this time it wasn't, it was like quick hello. And then, back to what i was doing and i think um Mm, that that you know that that got him going and he held on to that yeah i hear that yeah so it's 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 a good reminder of it's a good reminder of like even if it seems insignificant like ah you know what's what's even if it was just five minutes of just devoting to him when he gets back home just to connect and and i don't find it insignificant like oh i'll i'll finish what i'm doing and then i'll go chop it up with them but to him or to a kid especially if you're looking forward to seeing mom dad whoever that mean it, it it means more than we think it does yeah for me it's it's still not easy like going to colorado meeting up with you guys e it was it was tough like I made it a point to like the day, night before to really like, you know, say, spend time and like say goodnight, you know, like for longer than I normally would and that kind of stuff. And during the trip, <clears throat> I missed a couple of, couple of bedtimes 
usually I like check in or whatever. And, and that made me feel bad. Cause even when I call to check in and I'm like, Hey, how's, how, you know, how the kids. And then they pass the phone around to FaceTime. Um, a lot of times I get nothing from them. They're like playing video games or whatever. Right. But at least they know you checked that's, in. That's yeah. the thing. Like the fact that I was able to check in does do a lot, even though they might not be paying attention to me. Um, so what's funny is so my my daughter, my youngest, my my oldest, who is the least um like touchy feely, kind of emotional with me before I went to bed that night before I was taking the flight. She was the one that was like hugging me, saying good night, have a safe flight. I was like, I didn't want to make it weird for her because it's not normally how she is. But I was taken aback. I was like, oh, snap. OK, she's going to miss me, which is not normally the case. At least she doesn't express it. Did she actually miss you, though? She didn't say <laughs> it. She didn't say it, but she did embrace me the day, right, right, right. the morning after as well. Mm. And then the other two, like my youngest daughter, she loves to get on. Like she loves to pretend like she doesn't care. So when I got up the next morning, my son's like, oh, dad, blah, blah. And then my daughter, my youngest is like, all right, wh- where's my breakfast? Yeah. <laughs> like, who are you? Get get to huh. work. So, but I I mean, you know, that's what she does. And then she'll come later and like, you know, hug me or whatever and call it a day. But my kids, I feel like, I don't have that kind of reaction from them that you guys just expressed. And I, I, I can't say I blame it. I, I, it's because of the support I have for my wife. Not that you guys don't, but like it's a, they really gravitate toward my wife. And sometimes I'm like, damn, am I just a shitty dad that they don't like come to me as much as they do to her. Right. But I find like, it's, it's the way our dynamic works and their lo- expression of love is just different. Mm. Yeah, it's so funny. It makes my, it easier for me. You know, my I was having breakfast with my son this morning for a school, and he brought up the whole travel thing again. He's like, "So, when exactly is your next trip?" Mm. Like, he's already thinking ahead of like, "All right, when is this happening?" And now, and now, my wife's got to start traveling a little bit again. So, you know, that's we're gonna flip the script a little bit, and so I know he's got that in the back of his mind too. So, mm-hmm. but um, I found it interesting that he, I mean, just in the morning out of the blue that he's still holding on to this. All right. When's the next trip? Like when are you leaving again? You know, that kind of shit. Another, another question with this is, do you guys um consider what's best? Like with the dynamic of how your kids react to like how you schedule your travel. Like, for example, like, I'm trying to figure out, is it best for me to leave so early that they're not awake yet? You know, because this time I left on Sunday, they were awake, they were with me. So I feel like it sets up the day for like, okay, we're going to have the rest of the day. And then daddy's no, I got to go now. Yeah. You know, but then again, it's still like, what's, you know, it's like, it's like a catch 22. Like if you leave and, you know, in the, you know, early in the morning and they wake up and then you're just not there. I don't know if that's better than if they see you a little bit and then you leave. And the same thing coming back, like I come back later at night and usually because of time changes and certain kind of travel, uh, that's just the way it ends up. Yeah, definitely all things I take into consideration, whether or not it works out. It's a different story. I mean, I know for this next trip that I have coming up when I was booking the flights, I mean, I, I definitely booked my return flight to dip out mad early so i would get home because i had a because i thought he uh, he had a basketball game that night so i'm like let me make sure i'm back in time to go to the go to his game so yeah i've I've found the the, being able to set it up like a surprise when you come back has worked out well for me sometimes when i lived in miami i remember this vividly like we would my wife would take me to the airport with all the kids Mm. and i think that was a good thing for them because they uh, they kind of saw me off and it wasn't like I was just all of a sudden I wasn't there right um so th- for me for us I think that worked out well but like like Kay I always try to like yo if I can schedule this so that I can go pick up my kid from the bus stop and he doesn't really expect it because he's not never sure when I'm coming back or to what time I'm coming back 
that that kind of helps the situation because they're not expecting it. You know what? You know what's been working pretty good the last couple of trips. I mean, again, it it, it all depends on the availability and all that kind of stuff. But if I get in early enough uh, and my wife is able to, she picks him up early from school and then the two of them come pick me up at the airport. So it's like, uh, it's just like an extra added bonus of like, Oh, okay. I get out of school a little bit and I get to pick that up. Pick, yeah. You, you guys think that the, the ages that I have is that, that they're just not, yet comprehending what it is to like leave out of town and stuff like now i'm telling like you know we'll see planes and and i'll tell my daughter you know i'm going on a plane and she's like oh and then she's like Can you, i want to go on a plane with you too you know like yeah so like i feel like they're not they don't really truly grasp what it is to leave town yet and and that's what makes it weirder for them it's hard it's hard man because they tug on your heartstrings and it, it's really difficult for you to separate you know their age from understanding from you actually departing. So it's, there's a lot going on at, the, at one moment. It, it's so, and I think you, you are really cognizant of this in your decision-making because you're, you're really trying to prioritize what trips you take versus what you don't. Right. And so right. because you approach it that way, I feel like, and this is easy for me to say hard for it to be actually done, but like the guilt that you feel, you almost got to like feel, simplify it a little bit or, or water it down some because the context in which this is happening is very young children not really comprehending what's happening right, right. yeah i mean there's a lot of re th th but there's more than the comprehension part like i'm all i'm overthinking everything because i'm like okay uh i go out of town is it how worth it is for me to put myself at risk in any situation you know, and, and it doesn't go for the line of work. I do if anything. You just you go Down leave the, the house, yeah. you know, you do anything. And I put myself now in this crazy mindset that it's like, I don't care about my well-being for myself. I care about my well-being to take care of my kids. Right. And if something were to happen to me, that would affect them. And so every decision goes with that, which is probably not really good for me <laughs> or for anybody. <laughs> I have become the master of one night trips where I max it. It's like two days full, but it's really one night. And I have become the master of that. But, but yeah, that's, that's one of the things that, that really goes through my decision-making and, and kind of like haunts me for, for like, you know, okay, click it's booked. You know? like, yeah, right. Ah, oh, fuck. You know? And then I start to play out scenarios and, and I'm just like, I just, I always, um, I prepare for the worst, you know, and, but I, you know, I hope for the best, however that really works. <laughs> I feel like you also got to give yourself credit on the other side, right? So like you going away has you could probably connect the dots toward real positive impacts on the quality of life, your sanity and health, right, and, right, and right. that of you know, well-being of your family. So there I think there's but it's balancing out, making sure that it's you know, like you gotta I, I have to like look at every trip, like what is this worth and why am I doing it? Yeah. And, and you know, and then depending on what it is, okay, it's in and out, it's in and out, it's in and out. So, but but you know, it's crazy because if you think about yourself, and this goes out to anybody, I doubt we have any listeners without kids, but to think about myself before kids, you would you never even think about all of these things that you're gonna have to contemplate when you have kids. The idea that you're gonna be looking at every, the schedule what time you leave what time you get back oh uh, yeah it's whatever day yeah. you leave this, <laughs> yeah. that like it's so crazy man like as a, as a single person now i'm like wow that's that's pretty you know like you're free motherfucker you know, like, you know and not in a good or bad way it's just it's just different it's just a different uh state of mind that you're in when you have children and you give a fuck you know i mean i'm sure that there might be people that are a little bit more loose with how they do things yeah, it's true, man. Don't mean to offend anybody out there. <laughs> the yeah, loose person's like, fuck that, bro. <laughs> Shit. Right. You care about your kids too much, motherfucker. <laughs> I, I, mean, I think I've mentioned this many times, and I think all of us do this. Um, but like, yo, having a shared family calendar, yo, is everything. With sharing with who, though? With, with your, your kids? With your lady, with your well, not your kids, because between you and your <clears throat> and your the, the mother, and in, in our cases, 
will be able to account for all the things that are happening um, across the family. But being able to like that thing is I schedule my work meetings with that, like any travel possibilities, all that stuff just makes it so much simpler. I have too much of a rando schedule for that to really work properly. Mm. Right. You got last minute things that pop up. Like it's easier for me to just tell text my girl than wait for hope that she looks at the at the calendar. Oh god. Now we made it a point. We're like, yo, before anything goes down, you gotta look at the calendar or else it you gotta sacrifice whatever right. you know was coming through. Hmm. Yeah, we do like a hybrid of that right now, but I think we've got it. There's more oh, stuff right. ramping up, so we gotta dial it in a little bit more now. Yeah. So you want to talk about Red Rocks? E? Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't know how it applies to this, but go ahead. Nah, I mean, it was two dads going away from their family. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the two fatherhood. <laughs> two thirds of the fatherhood were <laughs> right. in Denver, Colorado. Um, first and foremost, I'd never been. Have you? Yeah, you. I think you said you've been to Red Rocks, right? Okay. Well, I mean, e? no, I haven't okay, been. Okay. No, I haven't been. K hasn't. This was your first time also, E? Not my f- I don't know if I told you oh, I've been right, to something right. the park I just never been I thought I had been to the theater but I know I've never been to the amphitheater so definitely something that y'all should check out if you have the opportunity to go see an event over there because it is breathtaking super convenient as far as like the venue itself how to see the show getting there yeah. might be a little bit cumbersome but um and just like the atmosphere like the energy in there you got this mix of like you know how you go to a concert and there's like the music energy and then you've got the natural energy from like the actual environment. Yeah, no, it's it feels like like that's a legendary venue. It does feel that way. Yeah, it was it, feels- it was it was ill. And it what was cool for us, I mean, we got to kick it with Mayday um and really just like consume like a lot more than just like the regular show. But we got to go through that tunnel. I thought that was pretty ill. Well, let's describe it for anybody who doesn't know. It's basically a, a concert venue that seems like it's carved out of the side of a Rocky Mountain, basically. That's how that's the look of it. That's the feel of it. That's the you know, it's very it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. It, it actually it, it like it Flows. fits into the to the natural environment really well. Yeah. Now you can go into the bomb shelter. Hey, real quick. Did did um because you had mentioned that they uh their, their kids were there. Mayday's kids were there. Or oh, some of there, them. There was there. mad people's kids. There. Really? <laughs> that that that's always something that struck me about uh Tech Nine's followers and strange. They bring their users. kids though. Yeah. It's a it's a generational. You saw old people that were definitely grandparent age, you know, young couples with kids and everything in between, and and little kids. And you know, maybe I wouldn't necessarily take my kid. But it's there's something to say there, you know, how cool that kind of is that they're all like sharing and you see little kids like vibing out. Did um did their did their kids stay for their show? Do you know? Uh Burns kid did, and then uh his brother had came out with his fiance and mm-hmm. and their daughter, I believe. And they his fiance was actually me and her had a little quick conversation. She's like, you know, I said, Oh, I have a daughter close to that age, and she's like, Would you bring her here? And I'm like, uh, probably not. And then <laughs> right. she she was like, "Yeah, I don't know how long we're gonna stay here." And before you know it, they weren't there anymore. But it was it was crazy how many three generation families you did see there. Yeah, like it was it was very yeah. consistent. Like yeah. you did see like the grandparent age, the you know maybe our relative age, and then somebody you know yeah between from, like from like the the artist you know you know music side and like manager side of it looking at it that's amazing that that tech has been able to have that kind of fan base that is generational like literally he doesn't have to worry these kids are gonna you know like and they're gonna have kids and they're gonna have kids and you know and the older people it's just crazy it's wild yeah it was dope but anyway so we we were in these uh tunnels and made it too i want to say tech and made it because made it yeah made it. those fans too made it also so these tunnels that connect like the stage the backstage and like they had like a little pit where um, they kind of record the show. It was the front of house. The, the front of house. Show. There you go. I don't yeah, know. I don't, I don't know venue talk, bro. You you got to translate. So these tunnels, before you go in, they give you markers. And I guess because it's like, I guess, you know, privileged people get to walk through these tunnels. It's not just anybody that can walk in there. 
Um, and then we got these markers, and they, they expect you to tag up in there because it's like, I mean, you name it, mm. legendary yeah. bands and artists have been I mean, the there. Beatles played there back in the day. Yeah. yeah. So, like, so, you know, you'll see a Manny Digital on the step. On, nice. on the road. You'll see DJ right. Fan on the right. way. Put it on the step so people could keep stepping on his I want right. him to stomp the shit out, Manny Digital. Go for it. So, let me ask you guys this. Um, the trip itself and the final outcome and then getting home, do you guys feel like it, it was worth the potential guilt for leaving the family for a day or two? Um, I think it was, I think, you know, it was kind of, we laughed a lot and, and, you know, I needed that myself and it was cool. You know, I needed that break. Now I, I, I had FaceTime my girl from the red rocks and she was like, bummed out like she's like mm. yeah, i wish i was there with you you know so that sucked and then um <laughs> but it was not honestly it was dope just because and my girl had encouraged me to, to actually pull the trigger on it because you know we had managed mayday you know me k drea the trifecta uh i had you know i've known the guys forever they you know we talked about it in in the content we did for monster uh they go back to the first crazy hood event so to 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 be able to go there and, and 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 be a part of that show and you know on May Day and the, and also that you know they they had some big announcements I think it was it was cool and well worth it yeah I, I would agree um I think that disconnect so we we feel guilty I think generally as guys maybe not all of us but us I think we do to spend time with our people you know, our friends at this at the sacrifice of not spending time with our families right and so a lot of times we lean toward our family because there is that like yo I, I, really am i gonna go hang out with my boys right now when i really should be here with the kids and i think we gotta balance that out because it is really healthy like it's a recharge for us yeah. let's be honest right like it's a different environment for us we get to be slightly different version of ourselves and it helps when you go back to the family to kind of give you that additional appreciation for them but also just a a, a charge you get another yeah, it's, charge it's a release also you know yeah I, i'm i'm look as much as i say that you know how i feel about these trips and and you know how stressful they could be and how guilty i might feel sometimes i've always been a a, a big proponent of like hanging with your peoples and 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 being able to you know clown and talk shit and laugh and because that to me is like letting out steam and for me also, it's a part of how I generate my creativity because these are, you know, my friends and my peers are a part of, you know, like the conduits in my creativity and, it, and how I stay kind of like youthful in a sense. Yeah. If I, if I can't get that every once in a blue moon, that's not good for my mental health and my health overall. So I do need that. And, and this was part of that. And we, Manny could tell you, I mean, we laughed at, at Manny's expense so much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 No, everybody got everybody got it. Everybody, everybody caught it. it. <laughs> Personally, for me, I, I wasn't expecting this, but um, so for those that don't know, um, Rec is a brand ambassador for for Fly Dad, and he's been, I mean, such a great like partner for us, and really like exposing the brand to his fan base. And there were several people that reached. Out. So first and foremost, met his stepfather, who's a big fan of Fly Dad, and he was like, you know talking it up and kind of telling me what what he loves about the bag that we we, we made but i then afterward i got like t you know messages like people sending me tweets and fucking shit on on dm and there was like yo there was a few of us out there with our fly dad bags and i was like damn yo that's mad cool like and they were like yo we should take a picture next time i'll blah and i was like yo okay so like it was, it was a really like heartwarming thing for me, not expecting to come across that kind of vibe. Right. Um, so that was dope. And then, you know, the cherry on top was I flew, I flew United and we actually got a, a placement in United in their Father's Day gift guide. So in the Hemispheres magazine, if you're oh, yeah, that was United, dope. Yep. Yeah, super dope. You're flying United in the month of May. Yo, snap a flick of you, you know, looking at that. You didn't take a couple of copies, man? Yeah, dog, I got my copies. <laughs> man. Nice. But you didn't take a couple. You didn't get one I, for us. I got literally two copies. It's all right. I got the I got the snapshot you <laughs> sent through the chat. He doesn't he doesn't want to hoard anything. I'm a hoarder. <laughs> but yeah, y'all. Th thank y'all. If y'all listening, man, thank you for the dope experience at Red Rocks. I mean, 
pe- meeting with the people there, enjoying the show together. Shout out to 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 the, to the drink champs followers and supporters that we came across, and that's right. That was and, fun. And and the Mayday ones that have that that know about you know Crazy Hood and Mayday's uh, relationship. You know, we had some of those old school fans come come through and say what's up, and happy to see us all there. It was it was it was cool. Like, and Rec has his whole Wrecking Crew fan base, and there was a they you know I linked with them, and and they were telling me they all got together from they they met up from different places, like from Canada and from all over the United States. And they met the night before and got and like, you know, it's like a little fan club. Oh, and they made cool. a banner and yeah, that, that, all of that, you know, it was dope to see all of that and, and dope to get out of our regular environment and, and go to something which is needed, you know, and especially with the pandemic, yeah, we've kind of been away from these type of things, you know, before yeah. when, when we were managing Mayday, we'd go, you know, I'd go on the road with them. We'd go to all the different shows and it was a regular thing, you know? And, and so the pandemic, uh you know took a lot of that away from us even if it wasn't made it really just going out and doing different types of things right so it was needed nice man shout out to jay from monster held us down all right jay yeah, man. all right guys all right, y'all. end on a positive note we started guilty now we're feeling all right so yeah. that's <laughs> That's an inside joke, y'all. That means you ate a clown if you don't speak Spanish. All right. Later, y'all.